it's one of those things that you, you know, you don't fight 30 plus years to reach a moment like this, and then when it gets here, it's the 31 years disappear. So I still feel that apprehension, yes. you know. Uh, but thank, thanks to the governor, you know, for keeping his word, and uh, I appreciate all those in the legislature and other political figures and citizens of the state of Montana who stood beside me and helped support this cause, you know, with their dedication and commitment to justice, you know, as well as, you know, improving the state of Montana. Barry, this is the second time that you've walked out uh, just before Thanksgiving. This time, it doesn't look like there's any chance of you going back. How does, Sir, can you uh, talk about how that feels? I, I've yet to actually read the governor's order, so I don't know what the terminology is, but it's my understanding it is some type of a time serve, so no, the chances of coming back this time, which was probably my worst experience in life, to be honest with you, was having to come and turn myself in and come back to this place. Uh, you know, it, it took me a couple of years to overcome that moment, and uh, this time, there's going to be a lot of healing and a lot of tears between here and Billings, Montana. So. Why did you find out you were going to be released? Uh, not too long ago. Uh, we came in uh, We came in this morning, uh, Peter and I did, to, uh, to talk to Barry. We were the ones who told him that today was the day he was going home, he was going to be free, and his nightmare of 33 years ends today. assured me that I'd reach this point. Uh, I never dreamed it was going to take this long. I honestly did, didn't think that the time period that it has taken to reach this point would be so extensive. Uh, but I, I've always believed, you know, and let me say this, you can't keep fighting unless you believe. You have to believe in that and you have to hope you have to pray and know that those prayers are being heard and that someday if you could just hang on, it, it'll come to this. Um, I'm thankful. I'm thankful to everybody, the media, all of you guys, a lot of John, you've, I've known you for a long time, you know, uh, Sarah, this isn't our first time together, you know, there's Diane and others that, you guys have been great. You, you've been great about being there and, and making making this part of my life mean something you know it's not just uh it's not just Barry Beach who's celebrating today it's not just Barry Beach who's happy today I know thousands of people across the state of Montana and around the world today who are who are rejoicing and uh thank God and that's because of the media coverage so thank you guys as well you know so Barry what are you going to do now what's your fruit what do you want to do now that you're out what's the first thing I'm going to go eat a good meal. <laughs> you know, uh, we got a long trip ahead of us, but we're stopping somewhere at a KFC and eating some chicken. <laughs> uh, it's, it's very, very ironic. Uh, for the past six months, we've been planning an event in Billings, and it's extremely ironic in God's timing that today I'm, I'm going to be at that event that we've been planning for six months in Billings, Montana. And ironically, it's at the Clock Tower Inn where I work. So a lot of things that God's hand is revealing himself in today. And as you can imagine, his mother anxiously awaits his arrival, so uh, on our way to Billings, we'll be stopping at his mom's house uh, in Laurel to, to uh, so she can uh, welcome her son home. What's going on at the clock tower? Uh, just, we were just having a private dinner for my mom tonight, and uh, never dreamed that this is what it was going to be. You know, but just a Thanksgiving dinner for my mom that, you know, there'll be more there and more to it now, I mean, because, because of this, you know, because of Jim and Peter being here. Uh, to praise God, you know, just praise God. I'm sitting here looking at you guys and I'm looking at that mountain and I can't even tell you how many times I've prayed, you know, looking at God's creation and prayed in that direction. You know, here I am. For the last time, as John says, for the last time, because 
they can't bring me back. How have the last 29 years been, have, how have they changed you? Uh, good and bad. You don't mature socially and educationally in prison the same way that you would in society. You know, you're going through your 20s, going through your 30s, going through your 40s, when people my age were out there on the streets developing their lives and, and building the white picket fence around their home and having the kids and taking them to school. All that's not there. But you learn to become a man who can stand on his own. And you learn to take the things that you truly believe in inside of your heart and those things that you believe in inside of you, they become the most important things to you. Because they're the one thing that can never be taken from you. You know, you learn in prison that everything you have can be taken from you. Everything you have down to your toothpaste can be taken from you. They can't take what's inside of you. They can't take your thoughts. They can't take your beliefs. They can't take your emotions from you. So you learn to guard those things in, with a sincere importance. Uh, and I think that's how it changes you. That maturity process becomes an internal instead of an external thing. Barry, do you go back to your old job, your old house? Are you going to pick up where you left off when you were sent back here? Uh, thanks to some supporters who wish to remain unknown, my house, I've never had to pack my house up. All my property sits in my house right now the way I left it that morning. So I will go back to my house, uh, my job, my business, uh, whatever you know, I'm allowed. And, pick up where I left off and hope that the healing process this time is a lot quicker than the last 18 months because last time, by the time I reached that 18 month period, I was just starting to find some balance when I had to turn myself back in. And uh, I think it'll be a lot quicker this time. You know, uh, and you think you want to say to the governor? I, I want to tell the governor, thank you. Thank you very much. And, and I appreciate you standing by your word like I stood by mine. I, I said that I would turn myself in if things went wrong, and I did. He said he wanted me released. He did. And I appreciate him for that. I thank him for that. And I will be praying for him still. You have a lot of uh, supporters in Great Falls. Do you plan on coming up to Great Falls in the near future? I will be talking to my PO today about travel permits. And as soon as I can get to Great Falls, I will be up there to see the people in Great Falls, Helena, uh, the Montanans for Justice in Helena, the Great Falls Freedom Walkers. Uh, of course, tonight I will see the Billings BB3 support group over there. Uh, the Bozeman people, I don't, will probably just come to Billings. But uh, yes, I, I owe so much to my supporters and especially the ones in Great Falls because even this Wednesday when it was windy and 20 degrees out, they were walking in Great Falls, Montana with signs asking for this moment. Asking for this moment, this is what they wanted was this right here. So, Jim, can you talk about for you your um, odyssey of this type of work over the last well, several decades, where Barry's case sort of fits well, into that? We've been uh, doing this work for the last 35 years of trying to free the convicted innocent, and Barry, of course, being one of them. Uh, this stands right up with the Texas case as being the most difficult one because of the uh, ups and downs. It was a roller coaster ride. Uh, Having him re-imprisoned um, was the most, one of the most difficult moments in my personal and professional life. Um, and uh, it was a fight to the end, and this is the end. And we're so thankful for the governor and so many people that Barry's already pointed out who have helped us free him, uh, that his, it's over. He's going home never again to be in jail or prison and it's a great feeling to to finally I can't wait to bring him home which we're going to do today to his mother when I called her at seven o'clock in the morning this morning she had no idea that her son would be home within hours and now she does and she just she was overwhelmed with joy and tears and that's what it's all about for us to bring the convicted the innocent convicted sons and daughters home to their loved ones. Mr. Camille, it seems, you know, in the last legislative session, there was a lot of laws passed that sort of let this happen today. Do you see a lot of, you know, was, was what happened, it, it had to be instrumental in, in, in this. It was unique. Uh, you 
in all the cases I've worked on, uh, you know, we, we strike out in court. We we're always one judge short in, in uh, Barry's case. And with the parole board, uh, we couldn't overcome the resistance there. And these supporters of Barry's got together and with the assistance of legislators put together uh, a bill that gave the governor the authority to review its case. And that I've never seen that happen before. And the overwhelming support in the legislature was just remarkable. Uh, so uh, that, that's unprecedented as far as I know. This executive clemency bill uh, signed by the governor uh, was sort of last resort for Barry. And uh, we just thank God for it. Is Barry the first uh, inmate to be released under this? Under this, yes. Under this law? In Montana. Yeah, just, uh -huh. This law took effect October 1. <laughs> and so this is the first time that uh, 